Welcome to our sixth and final episode from chapter four. And we're only going to cover this one slide on here, but it's going to be an important episode because there's some concepts on here that you're definitely going to need to show up, or they're definitely going to show up on a test or a quiz or both. All right. Uh, this one deals with ecological succession. And this is the predictable changes to a community over time. And it typically happens after a disturbance. A disturbance is something that changes the ecosystem, often in a dramatic way. All right. So we have three types of succession. The first one is called primary succession. And this occurs where there was no soil before, and therefore no chance for a community to, to occur. Um, this will happen after, say, a uh, volcanic eruption or a glacier melted, so now some rock has been exposed. Um, something of that sort have basically just wiped out or created new land. All right? uh, it all begins with a pioneer species. Uh, this will be the first species, typically think of like a weed, uh, some type of plant that will uh, basically grow on the rock and then begin to the slow but inevitable process of breaking that down into soil. And it often occurs with a thing called a lichen. Now, lichens are really, really cool. They're a symbiotic relationship. In fact, it's a mutualistic symbiotic relationship. Now, go back to the episode, uh, Chapter 4, Part 5, if you want to learn about symbiosis in more detail. But basically, I want you to remember here that a lichen is a mutualistic symbiotic relationship between an alga and a fungus. The fungus is going to be able to absorb some nutrients from the rock, and the alga is going to be able to do photosynthesis to provide food for both the alga and the fungus. And obviously, those nutrients from the fungus will help the alga move along. Okay. In secondary succession, we've already had a community there before, but there's been some disturbance. Think of like a hurricane, forest fire. Uh, humans have just bulldozed down the forest, for example. Something has caused um, the previous community to, to disappear, to be destroyed. All right. Um, another example could be like abandoned farmland. It's like we, you've just used to farm here. Now nobody farms it there, and the forest is going to grow back. That's secondary succession. Now it will return to its original community, and that original community is called the Climax Community. Now, in secondary succession, the original community may not come all the way back. It's going to be altered in some form. But it's going to be pretty close to what that original community is if it's left for nature to do its part. And the Climax Community is the final uh, most prevalent community that you're going to find there. So in our area of the country, that would be a deciduous forest with uh, hickories, maples, oaks, etc. Um, the Climax community out in Arizona could obviously be like a desert. Uh, the Climax community in Brazil would be a rainforest. It varies with what part of the world that you're in, but there will be a, a Climax community for that area. All right. Marine succession is, is rather unique. Um, one of the best examples, we see this deep, deep in the ocean. Let's say a whale has died and it sinks to the bottom. Um, there's going to be an orderly process of how that whale is broken down. As you can see from this clip that I have on here that you've been watching, is how it changes through a time-lapse photography. Okay? Uh, I really want you to pay attention to primary and secondary succession. Make sure you know what a pioneer species is and make sure you know what a climax community is. All right. So that's going to end our episodes here from Chapter 4. So until our next series of screencasts, we're going to catch you on that flip side.